Life is hard, and so are the decisions that we need to make on a day-to-day -day basis. But at the end of the day, we are all looking for the same thing. We're all looking for a certain level of happiness and a certain level of security. Now, what is it that makes us feel happy? Is it that secure job? Is it having our lives organized in a way that it's predictable? Is it really that security that makes us feel happy? Now, let me ask you, is the life that you lead today, is it good? Or are you happy to settle for just good enough? Now, I don't settle for good enough. I will share with you now why on earth am I always in search of the uncomfortable, but more importantly, why I'm convinced that this can help improve your life. I kind of won the lottery. I was born and raised in one of the richest countries in the world, the Netherlands. I was studying marketing, I had good grades. I even had a student job that paid more than most grown-ups would make in other parts of the world. Life was steady, comfortable, predictable. And I knew that if I, would if I would continue to make the right choices, that I would probably not have the worries that many other people would have in this world. And you know what they say. Don't stick your neck out. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Well, I did stick my neck out, and I did start fixing things that were not broken. As a man of 36 years old, I've been an entrepreneur for the past 14 years. And I've started several successful businesses in a country that was once a foreign land to me. And the locals in that country, they would say that there's pretty much no business opportunities whatsoever. Yet several times, I've managed to find great business opportunities for myself. And people often wonder, Jan, how do you do it? And once I started taking the time to think by myself, how do I actually do it? I realized that I'm following a pattern. At the age of 22, I moved to a country called Croatia. And Croatia is one of the most beautiful countries in Europe, with an amazing Mediterranean lifestyle, great food, good weather, over a thousand islands. However, economically, this country is performing at the bottom half of that in Europe. And I knew that if I would want to lead the kind of life that I could have had in the Netherlands, in Croatia, that that would already put me among the privileged few. So instead of graduating in the Netherlands and pursuing a nine-to-five job over there, I decided to go all in on my first business venture in Croatia. And I could speak for hours about all the ups and downs that I had to go through. How I had to fight for survival month after month for years how I had to pour in all my savings into the business in order to pay for salaries. How I doubled up my capacity, and a few months later, I lost my largest client. As you can hear, times were tough, but I knew that I was moving into the right direction. Year over year, I was doubling my revenues, and fast forward nine years later, the company I had founded employed more than 400 people. And then I got an offer to sell my business. I knew that by accepting an offer like this, that this would lead me straight back into discomfort. I would have to start all over again from scratch. I would have to reinvent myself. And at that moment, I didn't even know what I was going to do next. I decided to accept that offer. And the reason why I was at ease with that decision was because over the years I had learned some valuable lessons. Each time that I would put myself into an uncomfortable situation, I would get to meet new people and learn new things. I would get to discover new places. And I would get to create something of value. And I realized that that is what makes me happy. Right after I sold my business, I started having a lot of mixed feelings. On one hand, I was happy and proud that I managed to build a company to that level, 
and to make an exit from it. But on the other hand, I was feeling very scared. And I remember a conversation that I had with my wife when I asked her, have I, at the age of 31, already reached the peak of my entrepreneurial career? Is this the biggest thing that I will ever do in business? Is there going to be something bigger out there that can perhaps even put what I did in the past in the shadows of the next big thing? And my wife responded to me in a way where she said, first of all, you need to ask yourself what it means to do something big. Does that mean big revenues? Does that mean big number of employees? Or should you maybe be thinking along the lines of doing something where you could leave a big social impact? And those words stayed in the back of my mind. And after giving that some time, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to put myself through hardship again. And through my entrepreneurial efforts, I wanted to do something where I could leave a big social impact on the country where my four children were born and where I had planned my future. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jan, where do you even find those uncomfortable situations? Well, the answer is very simple. I talk with people. And when I talk with people, I listen to what they're unhappy about. I listen to their concerns. And I listen to what they believe we should improve or even start in this country. It is those people that lead me straight towards uncomfortable situations, also known as opportunities. And once I have found an opportunity like that, I start to surround myself with people from which I believe can help me fix those problems. We then pitch possible solutions to stakeholders, and that could be governments, local municipalities, experts, sometimes even to people that have caused the problem to begin with. We then present a strategy that will be clear for everybody, but more importantly, a strategy that everybody wants to be part of. It's often not the experts that will fix problems, otherwise they would have already done so. It's the people that are impacted the most by the problem that will eventually step up and start fixing things. Now, like I said, I talk with people. And when I talk with people in this country, there's always one subject that we speak very passionately about. And that subject is food. But when we speak about food in this country, it's those people that tell me that we as a country are missing out on a great opportunity, which is that we should be exporting more. We should be feeding Europe, they tell me. Well, unfortunately, the reality is different. Way in the past, before I moved to this country, it used to produce enough food to feed an entire region. Today, sadly, this country is not producing enough food to feed its own people. And after that had been frustrating me long enough, I decided that it had to be me to step up. I wanted to bring solutions for a global problem, which is how to feed a growing world population in a nutritious, reliable and in a sustainable way. Now, there happens to be one country known for bringing such solutions. And that country is the country where I happen to be born and raised. It's the Netherlands. The Netherlands, with nearly 10,000 hectares of high-tech greenhouses, is after the United States, the second largest exporter of food in the world. So I asked myself the question, if the United States can be first, if the Netherlands can be second, can Croatia perhaps be third? Now, let me share with you how much experience do I really have in agriculture? Zero. Absolutely no experience whatsoever in agriculture. But remember, in business, you don't have to be the smartest one in the room. What is important is that you have a vision, and that you share that vision with others who, for those reasons, want to become part of your team to help you execute upon that vision. 
Fast forward, I'm happy to share that we are currently developing our first high-tech greenhouse in Croatia, and it shall be our goal that through our efforts, we become less dependent on importing food and ultimately to turn this country back into an exporting nation again, like it once was. Today, I can say that I'm really happy. It took me a long time to understand what it really is that makes me happy. Before I understood the pattern that I'm following, I would be putting myself in uncomfortable situations without even knowing it. Now that I do understand the pattern that I'm following, I'm putting myself in uncomfortable situations deliberately. Now, don't be mistaken. It's not that I enjoy being uncomfortable. What I enjoy is to turn uncomfortable situations into comfortable situations. Because throughout that process, I get to meet new people and learn new things. I get to discover new places. And I get to create something of value. And like I said, that is what makes me happy and gives me purpose. Now, let me repeat the question that I asked you all the way at the beginning. Is the life that you lead today, is it good? Or are you happy to settle for just good enough? Is the comfort that you're feeling, is that what makes you happy? And if the answer is no, then you will know what to do. Take a few uncomfortable steps backwards in order to really take leaps forward. Because that is what will bring you to places where you will find happiness and satisfaction beyond your own beliefs. Thank you.